Hello ladies and gents, welcome to my season 2 episode 1 review of Superman and Lois. Now I'm a little bit late on this so I do apologise, being in the UK uh, it's not easy to watch this show as it airs over on the CW in the States predominantly. So do apologise and this will be a full spoiler review because you've had days to watch it. I really enjoyed the first season, uh, a lot actually, and this as an opening episode is actually really decent it sets up quite a lot of interesting things that not a lot of shows tend to tackle and it reminds me why i like this show so much because i do i do really like this show uh and this episode was very very good like i said it sets up quite a lot of stuff which I'm just shuffling over set up the you know it sets up quite a lot of stuff that not a lot of shows will tackle but it's not without uh its shortcomings and as much as i really liked this episode i've got to say that it wasn't perfect, and we'll get to that in a moment. But wait, calm down, because the moment you start to critique it, people go, <laughs> shut up. I loved it. I love this show. It's uh, It was one of my weekly things that I loved watching, uh, and I still love I still love watching it. It's just, it, it's wholesome, it's good. I really, really do appreciate it. And actually, the things which I didn't like were just technical. I, I'll say it now. There was way too much weird lens flare. I just don't get it. <laughs> But it, but it was intrusive, you know, like I'm, I'm looking at a bit of the farm and a light shines in my face and it's like blasting out the, the lens. It's just, I get what they're trying to emulate. They're trying to emulate uh, a more cinematic feel. But I think that they've increased the lens flares from the first season and they just need to tone it down a little bit. The odd natural lens flare here and there works very nicely when you're trying to give a cinematic feel, right? You know, but if you're if you're adding in artificial ones like JJ Abrams, JJ Abrams, or if you overdo it, you purposely mark out the camera placements to include lens flares, then there's it it, it becomes a bit too much. The odd one here or there for artistic license, a bit of flare, literally a flare, it works very nicely and it does give a cinematic feel. But anyway, that's the only negative. Let's get on to the really, really positive stuff because I, I really like this show and I'm going to continue to like this show. I can feel it because of everything that was set up and established in this episode. There'll be no footage because the CW does copyright claims. So if you don't like my ugly face, I do apologize. All right, you can look at my gray hair, which is pretty predominant right now. But anyway, and yes, I just got out of bed. It's, a, it's early Saturday morning. Sue me. Anyway, so this... Uh, starts off where the previous season ended and we'll, we'll talk straight off the, the bat exactly what this is setting up or at least what it is tackling and what it is looking to tackle which other shows wouldn't do so first things first we get Natalie from another universe obviously going oh my god it's my mother because obviously Lois Lane in her universe is her mother and Lois Lane just walks off and I was like huh okay interesting wasn't expecting that but then for the rest of the episode and for three months because we flash forward three months she's been basically a cow to everyone and at first i was a bit like oh that's that's a bit out of character what are they doing why are they doing this with this uh, character of lois because i've really liked lois lane in this series but what they went and did is they explained it uh, in actually quite a smart way but they're like i said also tackling something which we, we we don't often get tackled which is she obviously had a miscarriage uh, and, it, and obviously that's really tragic. And then her own, uh, you know, maternal um, situation with her own mother. Um, that was really, you know, it, it's it, it's bringing to light family dynamics, uh, which is they, they've done a really good job of blending the superhero genre with family dynamics and representing uh, a wholesome. Not necessarily just American, but a wholesome Western family structure. They always depict Clark Kent as a good, wholesome father, out to do good things for his family. And now I think what we're doing with this series is getting that from Lois's perspective as well. Which we did get, obviously, in the last season as well. But now you're laying down you know, a, a bigger structure to build from. Lois, you know, had these situations with her own parents and is now being a better parent as a result of it. I like it. You know, there's not many shows that actually tackle those kind of situations. They just don't. So I really like that and I do genuinely really appreciate it. I think 
well done. Like, genuinely massive well done. Then, then, ladies and gents, this is where, again, they're setting up some interesting things to explore and discover. Flash forward three months, Natalie's in this universe and she doesn't know anyone. And they depict her having these sort of arguments with uh, John Henry, her father, John Henry Irons. Um, a little bit teen angst, but that is how a teenager would act. They are, they are a bit insufferable from time to time. And then they explain it in a really nice way where she'd actually made her decision days after being there that she didn't belong in this universe. And that was the thing, because she gets sent to a new school and John is like, look, it's Annika's not Annika. Yeah, I know, Dad. She doesn't know me. I'm a nobody, blah, blah, blah. And I was a bit like, oh, that's a bit, you know, that's a bit crap. Like, terrible writing. But it is actually how a teenager would act. And, and I said this about the, the kids acting in the first season. I was like, a bit annoying, but that is how kids would act. Because kids are, kids are annoying. Um, so I enjoyed that because then they lay the foundation for this bigger thing to come, which is that she doesn't belong. She doesn't feel like she should be in this universe. And then by the end of the episode, she's, she's back with Lois and Lois is going to help her. She's on the farm uh, with John Henry Owens as well until so they can find a place. And they're doing their civic duty of looking after family, friends, right? And that's really nice. I like that. Now, in terms of the wider superhero element, um, Clark Kent seems to be plagued by... I think it's going to be Zod. I think it's going to be the memory of Zod in his, you know, the personality of Zod. Because he didn't... They sort of washed that away a bit too quick in the first season. They were like, oh yeah, no, he's fine now. Yeah, no, I, I just overcame him. He's dead. Somewhere in my brain. Like, it was done too quick. For Zod, too quick. Way, way, way too quick. And I feel like they're establishing that this is Zod coming back. You know, he's, his personality is still there. You couldn't get rid of him that quickly. He's still going to be in there. That I like. I like that a lot. So uh, he's played with these things. And that materialized itself when he first goes to save a submarine. It's a North Korean sub. And I liked how they did this. So he's now at odds with the US uh, Department of Defense. But not in the way that you'd think. Because the thing is, like it's a CW show. A lot of people will be like, oh, he's hating on America. No, he's not. And there was this great line in the first trailer where he says, you know, you, I, I, you need to pledge your allegiance to... You know, the United States is like, I can't do that because I gave my allegiance to the world. It's like, yes, that Superman, he believes in the American way. It's he, They are his values, the old school American, you know, truth, justice in the American way. But he gave his allegiance to the world. Americans, America's interests don't come first, which has always been the case. Perfect. Really, really good. But now it's created a situation where the DOD... I've got all these super freaks. Super freaks! Super freak! No. <laughs> we interrupt this review for an intermission. <laughs> anyway. Coffee. So he's got all these super freaks. Who have got powers. Which is obviously from the ex-Kryptonite or whatever. Just individuals that have got powers. And he's training them up, uh, the DOD, they're training them up to be their own team. And, and I thought this was really good as well. Because when Clark realises this, he's like, that crest on their chest, mate, get it off them. That's not theirs. It's not yours to give out. And the DOD's, the new head of the DOD, because it's not Lois' father's, pretty adamant. He's like, America can have more than one Superman. I'm like, you're, you're, you're a bit bitchy, aren't you, there? For a big macho army man, you're, you've been a bit bitchy, but all right. Uh, so setting up these great conflicts and then we end the episode with someone punching through the mine and I'm like, oh, who's that? I thought, I thought for a second it was going to be Doomsday. It's not, I don't think it is. But I did think for a second it was going to be Doomsday. So there you go, ladies and gents. Um, good, good episode. Love it. Just weird lens flares. Stop with the lens flares. But I'm very excited for things to come. Um, weird interaction with... Uh, I think Jonathan, the boy wonder, the little boy with the superpowers, and his supposed girlfriend. I thought she was going to be pregnant. Uh, maybe she will be pregnant. Who knows? 
Um, they're not getting on very well. So I'm intrigued to see. I just love this show. Like, it's just a good show. I've, I keep encouraging people to watch it. You should watch it if you haven't already. It's a very good show. Go and watch it. Uh, you won't be disappointed. And anyone that I've put onto it has not been disappointed. It's, well, I'm sure someone has, but not many people. Whenever people have come back and said, yeah, I've watched it. I had my, you know, aversion to it. I watched it. Oh, you were right. So go check it out. You might like it. Let me know what you guys think down below. Who do you think smashing through the mine? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Thank you so much, though, guys. Take care.